بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال عز وجل هو الذي أضحك وأبكى رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي آمين يا رب You see happiness and sadness sometimes when somebody becomes happy the other person is crying and sometimes when the other person is crying the other person is happy Happiness and sadness are uniquely human qualities. Animals don't laugh. And animals don't cry the way human beings cry. And so it's a very special trait of being human to cry, to be happy, to be sad, to laugh. These are very uniquely and they are a big part of the human test. A big part of our test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we have to be very uh, vigilant about uh, our happiness and our sadness. You see, our happiness can take us away from Allah. And our sadness can bring us closer to Allah. And our happiness uh, can, in, in reality, in reality, when you look at reality, what does happiness or sadness matter if in the end you're in the grave? What does it matter if you're at the end? Your end is, it doesn't matter if you were happy or sad. All that mattered was how close did you get to Allah. So if your sadness takes you away from Allah and your happiness takes you away from Allah, or and instead if your sadness brings you closer to Allah, that is better than the happiness that takes you away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the reality is, most of us are human beings who we are closer to Allah when we're sad. Yet we are sad when we're sad, even though we're getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the people who have real uh, gnosis, real understanding, sometimes they start laughing when they're crying because they realize that, uh, you know, I'm closer to Allah when I'm sad. And in that, they realize what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing with them. That Allah is bringing them back closer to them. And in that, they realize that uh, this is a mercy of Allah that I'm sad right now because I usually am not paying attention to Allah and I'm not turning to Allah the way I normally would turn to Allah. If then the normal days when things are okay and I'm happy, I don't turn to Allah that much versus the days I'm sad. But what should be our situation and reality should be that on the days that I'm happy and the days that I'm sad, I'm as intensely interested in turning to Allah on my happy days and my sad days. But the reality is most of us, we're not happy. Uh, when we're happy, we're not turning towards Allah. And when we're sad, we're all broken and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why the Prophet said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to be happy with Allah and to turn to Allah as if you are, com because when we when things are not going well and we're sad, we realize we need Allah and we turn to Allah because the ship is sinking and now I need Allah, I'm in trouble. But the reality is you need Allah on your good days as much as you need Allah on your bad days. That's the reality of it. And so that reality is not reflected in our attitude and uh, as, you know, more difficult days are coming, sometimes sadness and difficult days and things that we feel are not, uh, you know, the way we would like things to be, take us away from Allah. And then there are those people on the other side that I'm not going to talk about, I'm only pointing, they are so negative inside themselves, they're only happy when other people are in trouble. And they're only, and they're sad when other people are happy. This is called Ain Nazar or uh, Al Ainul Haq, the people that give the evil eye. This is how they're, and this is what the Quran told us to seek protection from towards the end of the Quran because it's a serious thing. And so, our happiness and our sadness, uh, the reality of it is it doesn't matter if we're all going to die. If somebody spent their whole life enjoying, there's no bigger tragedy than death. For which even Allah says that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like to give pain of death to the believer. 
is what the Prophet said. In another hadith, the Prophet said that uh, whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. This is one side of it. The other side is that Allah knows that it's painful that you be put into a situation of non-existence. But if you're put into that, that tragedy of death is bigger than any tragedy and any happiness you have before it that preceded your death and the tragedy of your death makes all that happiness zero. And so if your life was difficult and then you died and your life was happy and then you died, the, the difference and the variance between the two are insignificant. Death it will be the most tragic thing that you will experience. Death will be the most tragic thing that me and you will experience and we will only realize that when we wake up in our grave and we're all alone and there's no wife and no children, no one to yell at, no one to talk to except our own deeds and the angels that are questioning us and the uh, and what will proceed in the grave from what the Prophet told us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the reality is that happiness and sadness are a test. And to the true believer, he should be as seeking Allah. You know, this is the, the problem of man, is that man thinks he's independent as soon as things are better. And it takes for bad luck to happen, so to say, if there's such a thing as bad luck. But it takes something bad to happen for man to realize that I need Allah. And then Allah gives you good days with the idea is that in the good days you'll remember your bad days and that you still need Allah, but we don't remember Allah. We don't remember Allah even after giving us bad days. So then the bad days have to come back. And the life is all about good days and bad days and how we manage our good days and how we manage our bad days. And so it's very, very important that we keep this in mind. And the reality is happiness and sadness are one and the same. Because something became sadness, before it became sadness, it was a happiness. I'll give you an example. You had a happy marriage, someone had a happy marriage, you were happy. Something was given that you became happy for, which now you, because, why do we become happy? Because our heart is inclined towards it. And when we got it, we were happy. Now when it's taken away, we're sad. It's the same thing. Sadness happened because something that was there already that was giving us happiness. And so in a sense, happiness and sadness are the same phenomenon, the same thing. Allah is the one who makes you cry and make you laugh. Because it's a matter of the heart. And the same thing when He gave you something, gave you money, He gave you a job, He gave you health, and then He took it. The thing that made you happy, and then that same thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the thing that He gave you, He took it. You had a child and Allah took it, like in Surah Al-Kahf where the child was taken, right? So we have to be, in reality, there's no escaping happiness, just as there's no escaping from sadness. The thing that gave you happiness when it's taken away and everything has its climax and its peak. Everything reaches a climax and then it's, it reaches its peak and then comes down. Health goes up, then health goes down, right? So your money goes up, your money goes down. Your job a uh, career goes up and then it goes down. So the same thing that gave you, if you just as you cannot escape sadness, you cannot escape happiness. And just as you cannot escape happiness, you cannot escape sadness. So life itself, when someone is born, you're happy. It came to you. But that same, we, we fall in love with temporary things, ourselves, people around us, things around us, right? We fall in love with temporary things. Temporary things come and temporary things go. Somebody's born, you're happy. Someone died, you're sad. And so it's our desire, it's our relationship. But the reality is the day and the night are the same. The reality is happiness and sadness, they're the same. It's the same phenomenon. Something came, you were happy. Something left, you became sad. That's the reality of it. And so people that are always upset and always sad, it's very hard for them to make others happy. See, if you're, if you're content, if day and night become the same to you, happiness and sadness becomes the same to you, you understand this is temporary. It is coming, it's good. It's taken away, it's still good. It's just a part of the process. It's life. Then you're in a situation where now you can, now you can see and make other people happy. 
See, when people are sad themselves and negative themselves, it's very ha hard to smile on other people's faces. But Allah is always with you. And Allah is not temporary. And so while the world is crying and then happy and then crying and happy, the one who has Allah in his heart, the one who has Quran in his heart, the one who has the reality in his heart, you know, he's saying to the world, guys, why are you running after these temporary happinesses and these temporary sadness? Allah is with us. And so the person who knows, knows. And the person who doesn't know, he's, he's, he's caught, he doesn't understand this process of happiness and sadness and how they're interlinked with one another. And so the selfish person and the person who holds a grudge, very hard for them to be happy. Even though goodness is coming, they don't see it. And they only see when things leave. And they fall in love with these temporary things. And then when somebody has something temporary, they become sad. Why does he have this? Selfish person is not happy with other people having good. And the person who holds a grudge is not happy with other people having good. Even though both sides, it's temporary. And so, you know, and then the person who knows the mercy of Allah is over his, his is is always is over overly dominant of the mercy of Allah is is overwhelming the person who knows that and the person who knows the mercy of Allah is overwhelming he will always then it'll, it'll be easy to see the good that comes in your life and also easy to deal with the things that leave your life the person you know even the prophets of Allah what Allah calls ahsan al qasas the best of the stories the best of the stories the best of the the stories mentioned is the tr is is dealing with tragedy. The father losing his child, Yusuf Yusuf being put in a well and then he being blamed. But what? At the end of that tragedy, they see the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Despite all that tragedy, they know that the mercy of Allah is there. And so they don't become uh, you know, they don't become overly despairing. Okay? Right? And, and Allah mentions this. Uh, that you don't become overly, overly uh, despairing unless you are qawmul kafirin the people who have, who reject the truth who reject goodness when it comes to them okay and so it's very important to even realize that this temporary coming and going even uh, difficulties and good days and bad days happen with the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one who's sad over his past can't be happy of the good that comes to him in the future the person who holds grudges of the past can't be happy over the good that will come to him because he's so stuck or she's so stuck with something in the past. Right? And one has to know if I'm happy today, the wind of the other side is coming. Sadness will be here tomorrow. Then good will come. And then, after every hardship, there's ease. After every, every, every happiness, there's difficulty. After every sadness, there's goodness. After every sadness, there's happiness. But the person who is aware of this, who has shu'ur of this, who has awareness of this, who understands this sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is then not affected by these things. Over here, two clarifications I want, or three maybe. One is there's a difference between sadness and guilt. Guilty is when you feel you did something wrong and you need to do tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to turn towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah wants you to turn towards Him. You feel guilty. So this is different from sadness, okay? And the other thing is that a person who has guilt for the wrong that they did, this is one side. The other thing is the person who is always in a negative state, you know, ya hasratan ala al-ibad, what a, what a, he feels like a, like low, he feels low, and this is the problem of the modern man, he feels low. But the prophets of Allah have been described as ulul azam, they were people of strong, resolute, decisions they made strong decisions because they didn't let the past haunt them they didn't let the past haunt them the problem is we have one bad experience and we think okay everything in the future will be like this but the prophets of allah were not like that there were ulul azam min rasul there were people who had strong azima strong decision making power and they went forward like with the good opinion about allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that allah will give them the result that they're looking for this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the uh, prophets of Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the believers, la alayhim wa la There's no fear for them, meaning of the future. And no sadness for them of the past. They, they are in a state of calmness. 
and they understand these temporary things that come and go of happiness and sadness and things come and go and it's all the same to them when we meet people our job is the people that are happy to make them more happy and our job is when we meet somebody that's sad to make their sadness less sad and if you believe in the mercy of Allah then you know in the end everything will be okay whatever came whatever left it's the same happiness and sadness is the name of the same thing it's just different ends of the same process in our relationship and our test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't get anything we don't lose anything it's just simply things come and simply go it's part of the same process and so the person who believes in Allah and believes Allah is in control of everything and that Allah sent rahmatun lil alameen that he sent the mercy to all mankind so that he'll tell us that this thing that's coming and going is temporary it's not reality reality is our closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the thing that is coming and going is it making you closer to Allah okay is it making you closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so it's very important that we are mindful of this and I'm going to share with you three different parts of the Quran to help us really sink this in believer the believer is not affected by what's coming and going he is focused on the here and the now what do I have to do to make Allah happy now is it time to pray is it time for zakat which sunnah of the prophet I can be following right now which adhkar can I is there time to do adhkar right now can I be doing this while I'm doing adhkar can I be doing a vacuuming the house while I'm doing adhkar the 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 believer is not interested in the coming and going of things per se over here I want to make uh, one point clear it doesn't mean that if you have tears because like when the Prophet ﷺ, his son died and he had tears. This is not what I'm talking. I'm talking about true sadness where it becomes like almost like a a blame in your heart against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or a blame that why does somebody have something, right? That you have rida with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have happiness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless. And sometimes this is not anxiety like uh, Imam Jafar al-Sadiq when his son was passing away he was in a lot of anxiety and people saw he's in a lot of anxiety and when he passed away he was calm and so you had the son of the prophet sallallahu who passed away and the prophet had tears he said this is the mercy of allah this is out of the mercy of allah it is by it is not that allah took it away it is it is it is it is allah, the prophet knows this is a pro, it's the fact that it's not coming back in the sense of this is my son leaving me and part of this process the and then in the same way Imam Jafar al-Sadiq when his son was sick he was in a state of anxiety but when he passed away and he saw this is the qadr of Allah this is the qada of Allah this is what Allah has decided he had rida he had happiness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was fine with the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala planned things for him right and so this is very important also everything is always just as it should be just as the will of Allah is whether it is good times or bad times everything is ultimately according to the amar of Allah and we have to have rida happiness and acceptance of the rida of Allah this is why we say raditu billahi rabban wa bi islami deenan wa bi muhammadin rasulan sallallahu alaihi wasallam i have rida i'm completely satisfied and happy with the the affair of Allah in terms of the belief of Allah and the deen of Allah and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu being the Rasul of Allah sallallahu So from here I want to share with you some of the verses of the Quran. So for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ نَبْرَاحَ There's no difficulty that comes upon you collectively or individually. إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ نَبْرَاحَ Except it's already in a book. You're not facing anything outside the mercy of Allah because Allah has already written it down and He's written it down with His mercy. And so ultimately that is the reality. And so and in His hands is always good. Allah decides things based upon goodness always. And then uh, why does Allah has, has, has put this difficulty upon mankind and individually and why is Allah written down? Then Allah says, the reason it's all written down, that you know that this is by the mercy of Allah. So you don't become overly upset over what I have taken away from you. And don't become overly happy for what I've given you. Okay? 
And in the same way in Sutul Fajr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, you know, when I, إِذَا uh, مَبْتَلَاهُ Right? فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُونُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا When Allah gives him something, he says, Allah has honored me. فَإِذَا قَدْرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُونُ رَبِّي أَحَانًا When Allah takes away from him, he says, Allah has forsaken me, Allah has insulted me. Why did Allah do this to me? You don't understand the reality of things coming and going. And you don't have rida with Allah. So that's the lowest level. That when Allah gives you what you want, you're happy with Allah. And when Allah takes what you wanted, which will eventually always happen, then you become sad and you say, Allah is a hand and Allah has insulted me. Why did he do this to me? I don't want, you know, I don't. if he's really Allah and he's merciful, he wouldn't let this happen. And so the second level is you have rida. Whatever Allah wants, that's what I want. I want, I'm happy, I accept whatever Allah wants. And the highest level is of the example is of Imam Ahmed bin Hamid rahimullah. That when he was being beaten on the issue of the creation of the Quran, when he was being beaten by the government, right? And they say they beat him so much that even an elephant would have cried. But not one tear came from him. Because in that test, in that difficulty, he knew in Allah sabirin Allah is with the people who have sabr. But when later on the king died and the new king came and they sent coins of gold to him and when he saw those gold coins they were brought to him then he started to cry because he knew that's something that can potentially take him away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so he said to Allah Allah that test I can accept this test is very difficult so these are the people who knew reality who understood reality for what it really is Right? And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives and takes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, about uh, the human being, right? Uh, about uh, the, the, the human being. When he gets something, he becomes overly in Sutul Mu'minun, uh, uh, Ma'arij. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this, right? About human beings. What, you know, when Allah gives him, he becomes manu'a, he becomes overly happy. And when Allah takes jazu'a, he becomes overly broken. You become overly happy because you think you did it. You become overly sad because it ha you think it was something, you know, that happened to you personally. No, it's just how life is. So good days and bad days or something came to you, you'll be happy. That same thing when it's leaving, you're sad. So it's the same same thing. There's no difference between happiness and sadness in that sense. So huwa alladhi adhaka wa abka. Allah is the one who made you cry. Allah is the one who made you happy. But understand the reality between these uniquely human qualities. You know, I will mention this at the end that, uh, you know, a scientist will tell you that only human beings cry and only human beings laugh. But in reality, uh, you know, I remember when I was young, uh, the goat that we were raising for the Eid, the one that we were going to slaughter the night before, it had tears. But a scientist will tell you, nope, animals don't cry. But anyway, that's a side point. But the main main thing is that Allah's one of the tests for human beings is what makes us happy, what makes us sad, the happy days and the sad days, and how we behave and our attitude towards Allah and our attitudes towards the makhluk of Allah, the creation of Allah, tells us a lot about how much of reality we see. So I'll end there, inshallah. As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.